my name is Duncan Machano. I've lived in Beat the Ground right beside Tigsy me all my life. As a young man, I always had extreme curiosity about our history and the trails and kind of routes that our people used. I would visit the elders to talk to them and question them about our history. I soon became aware that Big Tig Zibi was very important to the Big Tig Long Islamic. One elder explained it this way, it was our highway. Long Lac and Big Tig Long were pretty closely connected and because of that river. My grandmother was born there as well as most of her sisters and brothers. I talked to them and they indicated they traveled back and forth between Long Lac and Big Tig Long White Canoe. It always fascinated me and I was determined to one day retrace the route that my ancestors had taken. In 2014, I planned to do the trip with my granddaughter, Kyra Lee. And then in the summer of 2016, our dream had become a reality. On the morning of July 27th, we gathered at the bridge on the Making Ground River on Long Lake. So switch recording. <laughs> All right, sorry. Okay. So, anyways, I want to thank everybody, and I want to thank Gordon and his wife for coming along, volunteer to come along. Gordon has been preparing over the last year. Uh, uh, Gary McGuffin and Andrew also. Uh, Roy, uh, I'll think of you, and I'll think of your mum, and I'll think of my grandmother. Yeah. Well, I wish you good luck here, my It kind of takes you places where a vehicle or anything else can't go. I can put my canoe in the water here and end up in Northwest Territories. Just like jumping on that truck and driving over there. I can do that with my canoe by going through the wilderness all the way. Very nice landing there, eh? As we left the campsites on the west end of McKay Lake, it threatened to rain, but soon cleared up. What did you do with that rock, Kai? Eh? Oh. Shortly after noon, we stopped for lunch on the east end of the lake. The area there looked disturbed, and there were fragments of human artifacts. I suspect it might have been the site of the Trader McKay's trading post. Towards the east, the river narrows and there's wild rice grown. They were in flower. I'm suspecting that the raising of the lake level from the logging dam at the head of the river prevented the wild rice from growing to its full potential. <laughs> Way to go, Kyra. Good balance. You got some muscle in her ass or all, eh? Big is a morpheme from a word meaning to erode or break away. Tig is a morpheme denoting the condition of a river. So big tig ZB in English would mean the breaking away or eroding river. There are tree log jams between Karmat Landing and Big Rock Rapids. Oh, it's not bad. It's going parallel. Draw the bow. Let's draw the bow. I took my power saw to clear these log jams. I was wondering what the people used long ago because it's hard to cut logs that are in the water.
When I do these long portages, I'm always amazed at how hardworking our ancestors were. They would just do this as a part of everyday life, day after day. This is the first big portage going down the river. It's about 200 meters long, roughly about seven minutes carry one way. When we cleaned the portage last year, we could still see remnants of the original trail, although I lost it a few times. As I wandered over the grown in trail, I was aware of the fact that my ancestors had walked and stood and carried their birch bark canoes on the very spot that I was standing. I felt a moment of spiritual connection. We arrived at Dixie campsite late in the afternoon. A wonderful spot with plenty of space for tents. The portage at Dead Man Rapids is on River Left. We named the portage Cedar Portage because it runs through a nice cedar grove alongside the river. Almost Gun Lake is flat calm this morning. As we head south, I'm thinking of some of the other routes that our people used. About halfway down Almost Gun Lake, there's a rock cairn on the south shore. I have no idea who put it there or why it was put there. I did not want to touch it. I felt the need to respect the purpose of whoever put it there. Kyra made cedar tea that evening after supper. It was refreshing and energizing. Okay, 
something straight. Well, I know I'm getting tired when I start making mistakes. What's the what the bow? What's the bow and what's the stern? <laughs> yeah, he says climb in. So I'm, okay, so I climb in and I turn around to sit down. And I'm like, how come my seat is in front of me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice breeze. Oh. Heavenly breeze. Maybe we'll have the wind at our back tomorrow, too. Okay, I'm going to put this cedar back in here. When you're done with that cedar, what you do is you put it in a bush and you put a little bit of tobacco on top of it. I'll do that in the morning. That night I was visited by the four ladies in my dreams. I interpreted this to be the four ladies from Long Lack. Giving us their blessings for our efforts. Near the old beaver marsh, about halfway across the forge, Kyra found a glass vase half buried in the ground. A testament to the human presence in the past and a reminder that we were not the first ones here. Left this morning without breakfast. We decided to do the High Falls party while it was still cool in the morning. Even this place did not escape the modifications from modern industrial use. The rock in the center of the falls was blasting to allow a freer flow of wood over the falls. My brother Robbie supplied us again today. We were also joined by four more canoeists, Dave Crescian and his son Dawson, Ocean Cherneski and Kaylee Mishano. It was good to have the additional company. Seven K at the most. Oh yep. my gosh. Three. Oh, One, that's nice. Seven, three, four, three, four, yeah, five, six. It's not gonna work. How do you do it? What do you how do you Oh just play around figure it out? We did forty kilometers today. Long stretch so far. We did not like the campsite again at Camp nineteen above the rapids, so we decided to push on to Lake Superior. We phoned in to let them know we were coming, as we could now get cell service. Stopped at Shishigoi Wabak to offer tobacco and to thank the ancestors for a safe trip. As we were doing so, 
An eagle flew around us. Another good sign. The welcoming committee were out in full force. Drums were out and the song sung. They see it can be done now. Uh, you know, it's not just a dream, you can do it. All you have to do is get on that canoe and do it. Because when you're out in the wilderness, you depend on each other. You have to depend on each other. You help out. That's the way it is in life. It's not a single journey uh, through life. Uh, everybody knows that. <laughs> And if those kids can come out and back from those canoe trips uh, with a sense that we have to work together to get where we want to go, they'll work out better as uh, citizens of Bictigong, uh, citizens of Canada, citizens in this planet. We wait to our grandmothers and grandfathers for looking after us on this trip. Oh, me got you.